Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about sideroblastic anemia. If you guys don't know, we've already talked about iron deficiency anemia and lead poisoning in our previous videos. You can find them on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine. And there is a Hemoc playlist ready for you guys to watch. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because we are literally, literally posting new videos every single day for you guys. Damn, baby! All right, so let's talk about sideroblastic anemias. These are a form of anemia where the bone marrow makes ringed sideroblasts, and that is the hallmark uh, uh, finding in sideroblastic anemia, as the name suggests. Uh, ringed sideroblasts are where you, what you're going to find instead of normal red blood cells. Now, there's no problem with the bone marrow. The bone marrow is functioning properly. It's just it's making ringed sideroblasts, and this is all due to the underlying conditions that are causing this issue. Now, you're going to be presented with a microcytic anemia leading to an MCV that is less than 80 and this is the diagnostic criteria for microcytic anemias and this is pretty high yield so don't ever forget that and uh, you're also gonna have a decrease in all your red blood cell measurements and indices right here so that is another finding you should be well aware of for sideroblastic anemias again the hallmark for uh, a microcytic anemia though is gonna be an MCV that is less than 80 that should clue you in to microcytic anemia now, uh, in order to understand microcytic anemias, you have to understand that uh, these are going to be caused by defect in hemoglobin synthesis. So what is hemoglobin consistent of? Uh, it consists of heme groups, heme molecules, and globin chains. Okay, so that is the two things you have that make up hemoglobin. Now, if there is any defi deficiency, if there is any defect in the production of the heme uh, molecule or the globin chains, you are going to lead, you are going to have a microcytic anemia. That's what's happening right here. So we wrote that right here. The two main causes are going to be defective heme synthesis and defective globin chain. And today we are going to be focusing in this category. Specifically, we're going to be talking about ringed, oh, we're going to be talking about sideroblastic anemia because we've already discussed iron deficiency and lead poisoning in our previous videos, which you can watch. So a mechanism by which this occurs, by which anemia, sideroblastic anemia occurs, is pretty straightforward. It's all going to be caused by a defect in the synthesis of protoporphyrin. Now, re now recall to our heme synthesis lecture in our previous uh, in our previous videos, we talked about how heme is synthesized. Now, ALA synthase, ALA synthase is the very first enzyme in this process, and it's going to convert succinyl CoA and glycine to 5-aminolevulonic acid, aka 5-ALA, via vitamin B6 as a cofactor and uh, with ALA synthase, okay? This is the rate limiting step that's very important. This is the rate limiting step, okay? Now, any defect or any prevention in producing uh, protoporphyrin is gonna lead to sideroblastic anemia. So look right here. This is what we were talking about. This, pro this step right here is our rate limiting step. That is the most important step. You have succinyl-CoA, and uh, you are going to combine that with glycine with the help of ALA synthase and vitamin B6. And you're going to produce 5-amino-levelonic acid, a.k.a. 5-ALA. Uh, now, if you don't have a proper functioning ALA synthase or if any step along the way gets messed up, you're going to have a decrease in protoporphyrin. And a decrease in protoporphyrin is going to lead to sideroblastic anemia. So let's talk about the causes of sideroblastic anemias. You have congenital causes, uh, and these are most likely going to be involved with 5-ALA synthase, which is going to be the rate-limiting step. And these are all X-linked disorders. You can have acquired defects like myelodysplastic syndromes, and then you can have... Uh, reversible defects like alcohol poisoning or alcohol intoxication. This is probably going to be the most common cause of sideroblastic anemias. You can have vitamin B6 deficiency and copper deficiency as well as uh, lead poisoning. Forgot that one. And uh, you can also have sideroblastic anemia be caused by drugs like isoniazid and chloramphenicol. 
Now these are all pretty high yield in order for step one, uh, in order for you guys to understand what can cause sideroblastic anemias. Again, all of these can prevent the production of protoporphyrin and hence reduce the production of heme and give you a microcytic anemia. So when it comes to lab findings, like we said on a CBC, you're gonna see evidence of microcytic anemia Mainly, it's going to be an MCV that's going to be very low. That's going to clue you in to microcytic anemia, less than 80, and everything else, the red blood cell measurement and uh, red blood cell indices are also going to be low. In the iron studies, what you're going to see is you're going to have an increased iron, serum iron levels, as well as ferritin, but you're going to have a normal to low uh, transferrin or TIBC and a normal to high percent sat. That makes sense because if you have high saturation right here, or sorry, high serum uh, iron levels, that serum iron Iron has to bind to transferrin and that's going to lead to an increase in the percent saturation. Very important. Now in the blood smear, you're going to see microcytic anemia makes sense because you have uh, MCV less than 80. You might see hyperchromatic RBCs with the microcytic anemia. You might see basophilic stippling on the peripheral blood smear and ring sideroblasts on the bone marrow. And this is what a basophilic uh, stippling uh, red blood cell looks like. As you can see in this red blood cell, you have these blue deposits within the red blood cells and those are seen mainly in the peripheral smear and it's due to aggregate aggregation of residual ribosomes or ribosomal RNA, either or, okay? So that's what's happening right here. Those are the residual uh, uh, ribosomes that's occurring. Now, when you stain, you're going to see the, the little blue dots in the red blood cell. These are going to be associated with sideroblastic anemias and thalassemias. Also, thalassemias. Do not forget that. We'll talk about that in the upcoming lectures. Now, this is a ring sideroblast. Now, unlike uh, basophilic stippling, ring sideroblasts are not going to be seen in the peripheral smear. Now, the body, in this case, has iron available but it doesn't have iron that's gonna be incorporated into hemoglobin. Why is that the case? Well, in the case of pseudoblastic anemia, a step, a, there is a, there's an issue in the production of protoporphyrin. If you have low protoporphyrin, right, porphyrin, you are not going to be able to bind it with iron in order to produce Heme, right? The reason why is because you are not producing protoporphyrin because somewhere along that step of heme synthesis, you have a you have an issue and it's going to lead to protoporphyrin not being produced. That means you still are going to have iron in your body. Again, recall that you can't just get rid of iron. Iron all comes externally from the outside and it gets stored in our body. But unfortunately, you can't incorporate iron because you have no protoporphyrin to create heme. And that's what this is saying. Your body has iron, but you can incorporate it, and that excess iron is gonna be seen in the mitochondria. Now, ring sideroblasts are seen in the bone marrow, whereas basophilic stippling is usually seen in the peripheral smear. You can visualize ring sideroblasts via a Prussian blue stain, and this is gonna only be associated with sideroblastic anemia. So if you see this right here, Think about the causes of sideroblastic anemia and realize this is definitely a type of sideroblastic anemia that is occurring, which is a microcytic anemia. So now let's talk about treatment of sideroblastic anemia. Number one, the first thing you want to do is treat the patient with underlying uh, treat the underlying cause of the patient's disease. So if they have uh, secondary anemia due to, let's say, alcohol intoxication or uh, lead poisoning or vitamin B6 deficiency, you want to treat the underlying cause first. And you can also give uh, pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6, as a treatment for pseudoblastic anemia to increase uh, the proper function of ALA synthase in case you have a vitamin B6 deficiency. Now, with that being said, thank you for listening to this lecture. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It'll really help us out. And on our Instagram account, you can follow us at mad.medicine. And on our uh, Twitter account, you can follow us at It's Mad Medicine. You can also find these lectures on your favorite podcast service provider for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.